Hi everyone, Trout Flies here. This is going to be the first video in a new series I'm launching called Trout Flies Tutorials. These will be weekly uploads that appear alongside my normal fishing vlog. The idea behind the series is to focus on one particular topic and do a 5 to 10 minute in depth video. When I was out filming my fishing vlogs, it felt like there was a lot of information I wanted to convey, but I just was not doing a good job of talking about certain subjects and kind of putting the big picture together. So I felt like it would be better to compartmentalize all my thoughts on a certain subject and put it into one video. So that's what these videos are going to be. Before we get too far into this video, I wanted to announce that the Discord server is live. You can find the invite link down below in the description. Anyone that wants to come in and talk fly fishing, fly tying, just hang out with our community and I'll be in there as much as I can. Just come by and say hi and join our Discord server. The subject of this tutorial is going to be how I build my indicator rig. It's one of the questions I get asked the most in the comments. So I'll go over the components and some of the weird works and individual things I do that are maybe a little bit different than how you build your indicator rigs and I'll kind of go over the theories about how it fishes and some other interesting bits about the rig. So let's get started. Here's an image of my full rig. We'll start from the fly line and work all the way to the point fly. At the top I have a standard weight forward, five weight, floating fly line. I've snipped the loop off mine because I just got tired of that loop-to-loop -loop connection getting caught up in the guides, especially when you're trying to net fish. It, it oftentimes gets stuck in the top guide and you know, you kind of have too much leader out there to really reach and net your fish. So I wanted a connection that would get through that top guide better. So I snipped off the loop of my fly line and I just tied a nail knot to my leader. If you don't want to snip off the loop to your fly line, but don't want to use a loop to loop connection, you can snip off the loop on the tapered leader and tie like a three or four turn clinch knot to the loop of the fly line and it'll go through the guides much better than the loop to loop connection will. That perfection loop on the tapered leaders really isn't a smooth knot to get through the guides. So I don't particularly enjoy tying a bunch of nail knots. I, I'm just not good at tying them and it's really hard to get the wraps really clean on the fly line. So what I do is I take about a foot, foot and a half section from an old tapered leader and take the thickest butt section and tie a nail knot to the fly line. And then what I use to connect the leader is I tie a small blood knot from my tapered leader to that section of mono. And that way I can just tie a blood knot when I want to change leaders out and don't need to retie that nail knot. It doesn't really cause me problems going through the guides and it's just a much less frustrating and quicker method for connecting my tapered leader to the fly line. So that's what I do. To make it go through the guides a little bit better, I take a little bit of UV clear thin, UV resin, and then kind of make a tapered section on each end of the knot and then cure it up. And that'll create kind of like a little ramp that'll help the knot get through the guides. And that's something that works out for me pretty well. If you don't have the UV clear to do that, you're not a fly tire, then by all means, just go with the blood knot. It'll still get through. Just sometimes it'll get feel a little like chunky going through the guides. That's just my way of smoothing that knot out so it makes it through the guides. My tapered leader is a nine foot. 4x nylon leader. I attach my indicator to it 
whichever type of indicator you prefer. I'll go more in depth on why I prefer this specific indicator uh, in the component section following the overview of this rig. The next connection on the rig is where you connect your tippet to your tapered leader. You kind of have a decision to make here. It's a perfectly good spot to put a tippet ring if you're going to be nymphing with the rig primarily. The tippet ring will help save your tapered leader so each time you break off or need to retie your tippet, you're tying to the ring instead of cutting into the tapered leader. You'll get a little more value out of your tapered leaders that way. I personally do not use a tippet ring and tie a blood knot instead. This is because I change my indicator rig out for a dry fly setup and I don't really like using a tippet ring with the dry flies. But if you're going to be nymphing all day with your rig, then by all means go ahead and use a tippet ring. Whatever connection you decide to go with, this is the spot where I put my split shot. I put it above the connection, whether it's a tippet ring or a blood knot. The split shot can't slide down past the knot, so it kind of stays seated where it is. I typically start with a BB size single split shot. I feel like that has enough weight to get the rig down in most cases. If I need to add shot, I do. But I rarely feel like it's too much shot. So it's a good starting place and you can always add more. And it'll still work for you in shallow water. The first section of tippet is typically a 12 to 14 inch section of 5x fluorocarbon. Below that, I use a triple surgeon's knot to tie a 12 to 16 inch piece of 6x. This will help set us up for a double nymph rig. I clip the top tag off of that triple surgeon's knot and then use the bottom tag to connect the heavier fly. I typically like to have this tag end be three to four inches long. I feel like any longer than that, it tends to tangle up with either, usually through like an overhand knot. You'll just end up being a lot more tangle free if you limit that tag end to three or four inches, in my experience. The tag is also where I like to put my heavier nymph. To the last piece of 6x, I attach my second fly as a point fly. I like a lighter fly on my point fly. So oftentimes when I'm fishing, I'll have some sort of heavy caddis or stone fly or even a weighted mayfly nymph on the tag end. And then I'll have either some sort of beadless emerger or midge pattern on the bottom. Next, while a short clip runs of me actually assembling the rig, I'm going to talk a little bit about the components. I use a 9 foot 4x tapered leader because I like to maintain a taper throughout the rig, which is why I tie a first section of 5x and then a second section of 6x off of it. It helps you turn the rig over, which is super important when you're casting the nymph rig. It's a lot of the reason why I'm able to do those overhead casts with the indicator rig and while it really roll casts and water load casts nicely and gets that flip, that taper really, really helps when you're making casts like that. I also use nylon tapered leaders just purely for cost reasons. I don't think those fluorocarbon tapered leaders are really worth the $12 they usually cost. I tie fluorocarbon in my tippet, and that's where I feel like I get the benefits of the fluorocarbon, the water refraction benefits, and the sinking the rig benefits that fluorocarbon provides. I feel like I get those benefits when I'm just using fluorocarbon and tippet. Now we're gonna talk a bit about my indicator choice. 95 to nearly 100% of the time, I use a half inch white or clear 
ball indicator, airlock or thingamabobber style indicator. One, I feel like white and clear are much more stealthy. I think the fish, especially on rivers like the Provo and Weaver, are used to seeing those giant orange and pink yellow indicators floating over them and the small white and clear indicators really blend in and they blend in with bubble lines and if you're able to see them i really really encourage you to use white or clear indicators i also use the half inch one because they're stealthier and two because the strike detection on the half inch ones compared to the three quarter or one inch indicators is immense. I would say it's almost five or six times better strike detection than even moving up another quarter of an inch bigger. Those half inch ones don't really float on the water, they float in the surface film. So when you get really subtle takes, they'll go under in instances when a three quarter inch ball indicator will not. So I feel like the strike indication on those small half inch ball indicators are just so much better. So I encourage you to go try them out. For tippet, there's really no alternative to fluorocarbon. Between the light refraction properties and ability to cut through the water column and sink, there's nothing better. You should be using fluorocarbon on your nymph. I've used everything in the past from Rio to Scientific Anglers. And right now, I'm really liking Umqua's Deceiver X Tippet. It's great value. I don't think I've broken a fish off on it yet. I also like Trout Hunter Fluorocarbon. They're the old standard. They're, they've been the best for a long time and they're a great product as well. As for why I tie the flies on using tags as opposed to off the bend of the hook. One, I think the fly on the tag gets a better drift. It gets a more natural orientation in the water. And if you hold your rig up when you tie off the bend, you'll notice that there's pretty much two, twice as many directions on which the fish can hit the fly and hit your line. I feel like it if you tie off the bend of the hook, the fish has a hard time getting the top fly in its mouth because there's two pieces of line hanging off the fly and it's just kind of hard for it to close its mouth around that fly. Whereas if you tie off the tag, there's only one really bad approach it could have into the fly. So I feel like my hookup ratio on the top fly is a lot better when using a tag. I also feel like I foul hook a lot less fish because of that. I don't snag the fish with the bottom fly on the hook set as much. I also like to put my heavier fly on the tag and my lighter fly on the point because I feel like it keeps my rig in line a little bit better and creates less angles at hurt strike detection. It's just a personal preference thing though. That's it for this tutorial on how I set up my indicator rig. I encourage you guys to try it out and give me some feedback on what you think of it, what you would do differently. Just comment down below. Once again, I encourage you, if you're interested, to join our Discord server. The invite link is down in the description. And I'll end this video with a quick montage of fish sketches I've made on this rig. Anyway, thanks for watching.